Street. So we're on the north side of our square here. So you see a lot of open spaces like this one out on your front left. Well, uh, we've just been told that uh, the Catholic Church, they're going to build a church there. A church and a Catholic school. I can't imagine it being right there. But anyway, new city, it's all going to change, doesn't it? Used to be a street full of nightclubs, bars and restaurants and office blocks through here. So uh, a little bit different, that's for sure. fresh cookies to the left. <laughs> you can only buy them in twos because one's not enough. <laughs> oh, they're just delicious cookies, honestly. But you see, once you start eating them, you can't stop. Okay. 
Well, the priest building out to your right hand side, that's the original frontage of the old building, and they've just uh, put it in front of a brand new building. But yeah, it's, uh, that's our daily newspaper. I'll just wait to see what this guy's doing. I don't need him to. All right, over Gloucester Street into uh, the Cathedral Junction to stop number one. So this building here was designed for the trams and the brainstormer behind that design was John Brown It's also home to our booking office out to the right hand side. We've got a convenience store, bottle shop, uh, a few souvenir shops as well. So this here is stop number one. So we're crossing over here Fitch Street into 22 new bars and restaurants. Now if you want to try West Coast White Bait, the place to try that is uh, just on your left hand side. Uh, the original sin just on your left and they definitely know how to serve up some decent white bait. So lots of bars along here, Fat Eddies uh, play live music every night till late. If you want to feel like a boogie down this afternoon or evening, we've got the uh, Mexican bar there, we've got uh, the Terrace Tavern as a gin bar, we've got over 100 different types of gin, or a good old uh, Irish bar just down the alleyway for a nice cold kill, kill kill as your flavour. So the Crockett Bar just on the right there, uh, on the left there, has uh, only been open for about two weeks, so we're getting still a lot of businesses coming into our city centre. Out on the right is our Bridge of Remembrance. And next to the bridge of Remembrance is a pathway that can take you down to our Christchurch Youth Plate Memorial. Here we'll find 185 names each to stow, ones that lost their lives during our earthquakes. Stop four. bright coloured mall. It was actually well done that and I'm, I'm surprised they took it away so it used to be just along here. Get asked just about every day where it is and just say oh it's gone. Plymouth Lane down to the right and behind there is um, oh, it takes you through to cafes and stuff through there but on the other side of the building is our um, where you'll find our law courts, our police station and our emergency services department as well. So they've uh, brought them in closer to the city too. Lots of little laneways off to the left and right, taking you down to uh, different uh, retail places and, and food eating places. So it's just not on what you see on the outside. It's just all different laneways. They take you off to a local place, actually. Super, uh, sorry, pharmacy, post office. All your banking needs down here, currency exchange. And Ballantyne's on, on our right is one of our oldest department stores in the country. So 165 years old and it's been owned and operated through the same family for generations. Now Ballantyne's is normally well known for their beautiful window displays. Um, they've just covered up their Christmas display so they're working on uh, displays in behind so I uh, can't wait till they reveal their window display. Uh, they're also known for their cups of tea down in their tea rooms down in the basement so if you're hanging out for a decent cup of tea you definitely need to get in there. Well, that's a stop five. Kathmandu's quite new too, along with the building. They've probably been in there for about four months, along with the new building as well. So, definitely uh, growing in the Either either, it's up to you. <laughs> 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 
So the street we're going to cross over here is Colombo Street. It's one of the long, um, longest streets that run right through, or well, the only one that runs right through our city square. So if we go into uh, our retail area here. So uh, clothing, shoes, cosmetic, jewellery. So if you haven't spent quality time with that credit card of yours since you've been on holiday, this is definitely the place to do so. I got told off for saying that the other uh, earlier today by a guy. He goes, oh, I love your commentary, not, but not that credit card bit. <laughs> uh, if you're looking for a supermarket, just off down to your right hand side there, you'll come across Fresh Choice Supermarket. Um, our supermarkets here in New Zealand sell beer and wine. I don't believe in Australia they don't. <coughs> Alright, so this is stop number six. If you go straight ahead in front of us to the next set of lights and turn right, you'll come across it. it uh, it's basically a whole lot of restaurants, <coughs> a whole lot of restaurants under one roof. So you'll go off and uh, order a meal and get a wee disc and go back and sit anywhere in the whole building. So if you're travelling with fussy eaters, it's the best way to go. Uh, but if you're burger eaters and love a decent burger, we highly recommend the Bacon Brothers. Um, absolutely fantastic burgers. Can't beat them. All right, I'm going to reconfigure the tram and I will be driving down from the opposite end. Moustache, the they sell milk and cookies. Apparently their milkshakes are the best ones in Christchurch. I haven't quite tasted them yet. Try them out. Uh, the art wall on your right hand side holds and hides a big hole of what was uh, the Holiday Inn Hotel that stood about 12 stories high. Now they're going to redevelop on the site. Uh, into uh, retail and uh, office blocks as well. So Christchurch City, we lost 1,500 in the city buildings. It's about 75% of them. Some of the buildings that you see around you right now are all new buildings. Uh, we also have some building codes in place as well. We can't build anything higher than a six or seven story building. It's only about 28 metres high. But uh, some of the foundations of these buildings go down about 30 metres and they use what they call base isolators. Uh, base isolators are being cleaned and problematic so it absorbs any future uh, movement in the buildings. Uh, our buildings also too aren't uh, joined together like they used to be. They've all got gaps in between that you can see just down the side of the building. So the buildings are actually on a boat. As soon as any movement starts, there's a, a, a thin piece of concrete right around each building or actually break and let the building move up to 40 centimetres in any direction and hopefully come back to its original spot. So with all the codes and compliances in place, these buildings should withstand an 8.5 magnitude earthquake, which is 
probably one of the, uh, Unfortunately, we've got these heritage groups that come in and put a spanner in the works. 
Um, so he's going to uh, rebuild it as a six plus star hotel with about 150 rooms along with uh, restaurants and retail as well. He's even going to design it and keep the front facade of the building and then keep the original look as well. Um, and they're still not happy with that. So I think it would actually it'd cost more to, to fix it, wouldn't it? than to actually demolish it and um, put a new building in behind with the same frontage on it. Uh, as we go along, on the right hand side you'll see a little brick building, a lovely Georgian style building built back in about 1903. Well that actually survived the earthquake and the guy's going to redevelop this site with that in mind and actually redevelop right round it. It's actually quite cool. Uh, there's a photo of it up on the right hand side. I'll drive past it in a second and then show you. But, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a shame, it's a bit of an eyesore though, isn't it? It's not terrible. But uh, you've got a few oppositions uh, getting there at all. Nick is in the twist over it, that's for sure. So just on the right hand side next to the building there, um, you can see what he wants to redevelop. Look at that. Look pretty awesome, eh? Six plus star hotel. It'll take up the whole block and just yeah, the sooner they get, get started the better, eh? Alright, out on your left hand side while we carve a neti pole, meaning the uniting of the people. The water feature behind it actually represents the braiding on our Canterbury Rivers and sits in front of our new Christchurch City Council buildings. And to the right, uh, Christchurch Art Gallery, that there is a uh, free entry and open till five daily. A great cafe here too, because you've called you in a few so. Alright, so this is Stop 10, the Art Centre Art Gallery. So the Art Gallery was used for the um, emergency and um, emergency and civil defence. Cottage, Roller King, Gelatos, this is Stop and Leather. And also a tattoo studio if you feel the need to have New Zealand tattooed on you while you're on holiday. <laughs> so they've restored the end of the buildings here as you can see. And uh, they are working on the middle section as we speak, just on the left. So it's braced up pretty firmly, so it uh, doesn't uh, have any more damage if there's any more movement. And they are working on the interior of the building as we speak. So it's a 10-year project, they're halfway through. And the estimated cost to restore these buildings is about $300 million. And uh, they've completed the seat of the clock tower here, absolutely stunning, they've won awards for it.